Hey gang, it's Johnny. I have some really sad news. Uh, Singer, songwriter, playwright, screenwriter, Joe Carol Pierce passed away uh, last week. Sad, sad news. Uh, My heart goes out to her husband, Guy Juke, the great artist, poster artist, um, and, uh, and her family, her kids, Elise, who's a good friend of mine, known her for a long time. Um, it's sad news, man. Joe Carol Pierce, if you don't know who she was, uh, was really like a true artist, a real, uh, a real artist, like a real artist who spoke her truth and did it without a filter uh, musically and in every way. Like she, she was very, very, very open. Uh, I got to hang out with her quite a few times and always had a great time. Played a show with her once in the late 90s. It was when I met her uh, with Troy Campbell and Scrappy Judd Newcomb and me. Oh, and her husband, uh, her husband, Guy Duke, played guitar with her. And, and, and we played a songwriter in the round at the Mucky Duck in Houston. And she and I became fast friends and started emailing each other. And she was always very funny. And uh, and then she started coming to my shows uh, when I was playing at Momo's in the 2000s. And, uh, and I would go to hers and, and we would, you know, we'd have these great conversations and she, she was just always very, very funny and, you know, an odd person, like an artist, like an eccentric human being, but she always did have like this truth that she was always telling. Now her career was kind of strange because, uh, musically she never really, she, she never really had put out any albums. She didn't put out any albums until 1995. She put out her first record, uh, Bad Girls Upset by the Truth. Although earlier in the 90s, my friend Troy Campbell had gotten a bunch of people together and they made a compilation album that was incredibly popular at the time. I remember like 92, 3, 4, something like that is when it came out. Across the Great Divide, songs of Joe Carol Pierce. It's got 19 songs with a great artist doing versions of her songs. But she didn't really put out her first record until Bad Girls Upset by the Truth in 1995 and then Dog of Love. Anyway, uh... I remember when I did that songwriter in the round with her, she played, I think the first song she played was Has God Got Us by the Twat or What? Now, you hear someone sing a song like that, it's kind of shocking if you're not ready for it. And her delivery, like I said, is like a a character, like what we appreciate about Lou Reed, what we appreciate about Bob Dylan, all the great singers that have a character in their voice. They might not be uh, the Pavarotti's of their time, but they are people that, they Lucinda Williams, like... These are these voices that have these characters and they tell these stories and they, they tell you these truths that really, uh, that really resonate with you. And, uh, anyway, I remember when I first heard that I, I fell in love with her music and, and just, you kind of get the idea of what kind of person she is through a song like that. And, um, I might be talking too long, but I, I really cared for her. I had tremendous affection for her. She was a lovely person. I always enjoyed my time with her. I was always flattered when she came to my shows, and uh, and I'm really got, glad that I got to know her. And I'm going to share that song with you. <laughs> Has God got us by the twat or what? Uh, and I want you to enjoy it. And uh, rest in peace, Joe Carroll Pierce. We love you. My heart goes out to her family. Flipping like pancakes on my own. Like Parthenogenesis, I split it down the middle. I broke my yoke, I shattered my shell. I bet they got a call into the mental hospital. Mother Mary, won't you meet me at the laundromat? So we can clean up these questions. I have to ask, is my heavenly father a crackpot or not? Does God have us by the twat or what? you tell me what the deal is and what it's not? Does God have us by the twat or what? Mother Mary's gonna meet me down by the river. I got these questions to ask. 
ask for these burdens to give her is her sugar daddy a robber or a cop does god have us by the twat or what talk to me tell me something say something positive please i think he does hey gang do you find yourself listening to your music on one app and then listening to your podcast on another app if you do Stop this insane behavior right now and download Spotify. Spotify is home to all of your favorite music and all of your favorite podcasts. Podcasts including Fly on the Wall, the Saturday Night Live podcast with Dana Carvey and David Spade. The Rock on Tours podcast with Gary Kemp and Guy Pratt. Old favorites like Fresh Air, My Favorite Murder, Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me. Look, if you're looking for a news podcast or sports or entertainment or true crime, look, if you're, if you're looking for a sewing podcast or an RV podcast... Spotify has all of this for you. That's Spotify. All of your favorite music and all of your favorite podcasts in one place. Find it in your app store and start listening today. That's Spotify, music and podcasts. Let's get down. You may ask yourself, well, how did I get here? Hello, I'm Johnny. I'm your host. Welcome to the show. I hope you guys have all had a good weekend, whatever it is you did this weekend. Had a good weekend, man. Check this out. Skyrocket. We played a show, uh, a, like a, a rich person's backyard Christmas party show on Saturday night. And not only like it was it was one of those like over the top parties that you're like, like, there's no way like it's like three years of like how much money normal people make to have this party. I'm not joking. There were bars all over set up around the backyard. The dude owns his house and bought the house next door so that they'd have a house they can just party around in. Uh, they have a, a, a what do you call it? Uh, uh, a pool, you know. Uh, infinity pool that's what i meant <laughs> uh, uh a pool an infinity pool they have a waterfall anyway we played in the backyard of their main house facing their house by the waterfall in front of the waterfall that's where we played and this year we played it last year too but this year they they brought in a new level they brought in lasers this year gang i have you ever <laughs> i haven't i haven't even seen a show with lasers it, you know, since I was a teenager or something. Do you guys ever go to those laser light shows? Like at a planetarium? They had one in, at the Miami planetarium when I was a teenager. And I know I went to two of them. I know I went to a Pink Floyd one, but I can't remember if the other one was Led Zeppelin or Boston. Or, I can't even remember. Psychedelics were involved. I'm not going to lie. But Saturday night, having those, uh, having those lasers programmed to our whole show was so badass, man. You forget how cool fucking lasers are. The only thing is it was outside and you have to have the smoke to see the laser. So every once in a while, a wind would blow and then the, the whole super effect would go away and there'd just be like lights on the wall. But fucking lasers, man, that was so exciting to play a show with lasers. Uh, hey, gang, if you live in Austin and you'd like to come see Skyrocket, we are playing uh, Friday, December 16th at Antones, the legendary nightclub Antones. Come on out and check us out. You can go to skyrockettheband.com to get your tickets. And if you don't know what we're all about, there's videos and stuff on there so you can check it out and see what we're all about. Anyway, uh, looks like we got a, a party for this weekend. Maybe, maybe. We got offered a gig last minute. So hopefully we got that, dude. It's been it's been a slim pickings year, man. I will say it's been a long... I can't believe... I can't believe it's almost the end of the year. I can't believe it's almost Christmas. I have nothing together. I got to make some presents this year. I told myself that's what I was going to do. I got to come up with an idea. And then I got to execute it because I really don't have a lot of time to do this. It's a little upsetting. But I will do it. That's what I'll do. Anyway, I can't believe how, how fast this year has gone by. You know, Rosie's almost two years old. I've had Rosie for over a year now. Like all my memories now that are popping up because I take so many fucking pictures of her uh, are just photos of Rosie all the time. I love her so much. We've been having a great time. She was really nice. I was exhausted on Sunday after, you know, just kind of like a long week of stuff and that show that night. And uh, we just laid around all day yesterday. Went and played, 
but we we just mostly laid around all day. Gang, I have a great show for you today. Singer-songwriter Rule Thomas is on the show today. He lives here in Austin. You guys might know him. You can find him at rulemusic.com. Uh, he has a brand new album out. His, his debut album is available now on Descent Records. It's called Tonight and Myself. It was produced by my dear friend Frenchie Smith. You know Frenchie, I talk about him all the time. Anyway, uh, it's a fantastic record, man. Rule Thomas, man. Uh, he's a one-man band. We have a great conversation about that. Uh, he he. Uh, we have a great conversation about all kinds of stuff. He lives here. He's from Austin, but he lived in Australia for a while. We have a great conversation about that stuff, about writing songs, about, uh, about working with Frenchie, about the fun times that you have with Frenchie, about using the Mellotron, especially on his song, Come My Way. Uh, he also does a lot of private events. He does a lot of like, you know, private things that people, people play like Skyrocket does and stuff. Uh, but I have seven, six people, six other people. There's seven of us that, that we can sort of share in, in those weird times with, you know, when there's lasers, you know, the other night at seven people, I could share the laser experience with all of my friends, my best friends. Um, and, 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 but he has to do it alone. So we talk about that. He's a great guy, great guy, great songwriter, and uh, congratulate, congratulations on having your first record put out by Descent Records. Uh, all right, so without further ado, gang, enjoy my conversation with this great musician, Rule Thomas. Let's get down. What do you record in your house? Is that what uh, you do? just yeah, like demos. I mean, my setup's not nearly as good as this. Just like <laughs> I have, I mean, you have a lot of different. <laughs> like, I have one mixer that's falling apart. Yeah, that's falling apart. And, um, yeah, I let Marlon borrow it one time there because are you his age? He, I am a few years older. Okay, than I've known him his whole life. I'm friends with his dad. That's awesome. Friends with I'm his mom. So I'm Karen. friends. So well. Karen and Joe are my landlords. Oh, look at that. And that's... Tell her I said hi. I haven't seen her in years. <laughs> okay, I will. Yeah. I will. So I don't really know... Well, Charlie, he knows me as the guy that like lives... I live like right next to Marlon. So okay. we're in the same little situation of... Tell him I said um, hi. Yeah, but but I don't know him... No, Marlon. Well, oh, I'll tell yeah. Marlon. Yeah, I wish I knew Charlie better. Don't but like, Charlie you know, said anything. He's a... Uh, Nothing. He's a cool guy. I see him every now and then, and it's, I mean. It's cool. He's, I mean, he still owes me like 17 bucks for like three <laughs> months ago. No, I'm just joking. But um, yeah, my mixer fell apart. It's like literally has the back falling off of it, and like whenever I show up to my shows, I'm like rewiring it and stuff to like get it to literally like turn on. Yeah. Are you from here? Is that I your thing? I am from here, yeah. So you are born and raised? Where did you, what did you? I... So yeah, well, I was born in Round Rock, I guess, okay. and then we like lived in Round Rock, and then my parents got divorced when I was like five, and then so I grew up half the time in Lakeway, um, like right by the lake in Lake Travis, and then um, half the time like close to like Rolling Wood downtown, just that sort of area. Oh, cool. Yep, went to Westlake High School. Um, How was that? That's a. It was interesting. I mean, um, is that a snooty kind of school? It definitely has the reputation for that. Yeah. Um, I I was quiet in high school, so it didn't really. It's funny, do your me. voice and your songs <laughs> totally gave that away. <laughs> yeah, I was. Quiet. I, knew, I was scared you were going to be too. I was like, God damn, I'm no, this I'm guy's voice when he speaks is loud enough. Quiet guy, like I'll talk all day, but if I don't have to say anything, like in school and like that sort of setting, like yeah. No, I was, I was really quiet and probably like, I probably seemed intimidating like in high school, like people, cause I just, you know, maybe like straight that face, beard? like straight face, no beard or anything, <laughs> but like just kind of just going, like going yeah, yeah. through the hall, just, you know, seeing people I knew saying, Hey, but I remember someone in college, they were like, we thought you were like a, an asshole. 
And so we like met you and we we're like, wow, he's actually nice. Cause I just, w- I just was like the guy just on a mission, just going to what I had to go to, doing what I had to do. Not really just kind of going from point A to point B, not really stopping around. That's sort of changed since I've kind of come into my own as like an adult, I think. But back then, yeah, it's a little. In what way? What, how has it changed? Um, I mean, honestly, like doing the music thing and like, you know, just getting in front of people and like, I wasn't exact, I wasn't very expressive probably like most of my life. And that's probably changed like once I graduated college and like came back home and started playing a lot of gigs and just kind of like come into my own in that sort of way. I started to get more like comfortable in front of people. Um, you know, when you like write a song or like come up with something that you're going to go play for somebody, like you're kind of thinking it through enough that I just kind of just felt like I found like a path that that, like worked for me that I didn't feel weird in front of people or, um, I felt okay. Like, you know, giving up a little bit, you know, more than I was in the past. Like, you know what I would say or just like the emotions that I would show and stuff like that. So that kind of like, I learned that like by playing for people playing music. Yeah. Cause there's a lot of, uh, you know, you're going through, like, I'm assuming that these songs are autobiographical. It'd be weird if they're all about other people, <laughs> Yeah, they're but, pretty hot cause they're pretty, they're, it's pretty personal music. Yeah. Right down to the way that your execution, your voice is very personal. Like the whole thing is very personal. Yeah, interesting. I, I would say that I'm a personal personal guy and and I used to maybe be just be more reserved and now I'm just not. Yeah. And my parents would say the same thing. They're like, "Yeah, like you know, just kind of you're just kind of like a little different in that way." I think and otherwise I'm very s- the same as I've like always been, like kind of uh, I don't know, just the way that I am, just a, a guy, like I'm just a guy, you know. And um Where'd you go to school? Uh, so, born and raised in Austin. No, uh, yeah, where'd you go to college? Oh, I went to Goucher College in Baltimore, Maryland. Oh, wow. So that's, um, yeah. I, I, I hate Baltimore. You do? <laughs> yeah. I do. I mean, I, I think. I do. I like D.C. I, and Georgetown and yeah. all that stuff. Oh, yeah. Those Alexandria. Are great. But oh, yeah. D.C. is great. Um, it was <laughs> really? very random. Yeah, it was very they random. openly so, don't like Baltimore. Yeah, I mean. I don't know why. I, my stance on Baltimore is kind of funny because, like, I mean, I lived there for four years. Yeah, and, yeah. I mean, I would come home for, like, winter and summer breaks and stuff. Sure. And be in Austin. Um, but I liked where I went to school. It was kind of, like, very secluded. It was, like, in Baltimore City proper. Yeah. And, um, like, there's a big, like, highway that goes around um, the whole entire um, – it's called, like, 695, and then it kind of connects with, like, I-95, uh-huh. like, continuing up the East Coast. And, um, yeah, my college was like right on this major, major highway, but it was like a huge, like 500 acre, 400 acre park basically with a huge forest around it, like very secluded, super old school, um, with very Northeastern, very, very much. And it was like only 1200 undergrad. Oh, wow. Super, super small. What were you going, what were you going there for? Um, so I actually played lacrosse in, um, high school and college. So it was like very stereotypical, like white dude just like playing lacrosse but i was like always really into his like kind of my thing um and i used to do musical theater and like played cello when i was a kid and all that stuff and was involved at zachary scott um theater and then my parents i was the oldest kid and so my little siblings i have three little siblings you know as they're kind of figuring out what they wanted to do my parents were like all right, we can only drive you to so many things so you have to pick like do you want to play sports or do you want to keep doing theater and as I mean, I w- wish I didn't have to like pick. And this is probably in like middle school, and they sort of sat me down and talked to me about this. And I just said, "All right, I'll do sports," because I felt like I could probably use that to get into college. Like I, that's kind of how really far I was looking ahead. I guess um, I would have thought like theater because there would have been girls there. Yeah, that's what maybe I would have been so. Into. I, I honestly, they probably talked to me about it so early I didn't even think about the girl aspect of it. Um, but yeah, so I picked lacrosse and I was, I mean, I played, I was an all state lacrosse player in high school and, um, got recruited, went to this small school in Baltimore, um, cause I had some friends that had gone there and they really liked it. And it was like a weird quirky school. And that's what was like attracted to me yeah. about it. 
And um, I went there and it was definitely weird and it was definitely quirky. Yeah. And it was also great because it was mandatory study abroad. So normally like, so you have to study abroad to graduate. For a year? For So you can do like a two month program or like a six month program, okay. like anywhere in that range. Um, and that was the co- other cool thing about it to me. I was like, okay, cool. I don't really want to do this, but like if I'm forced to do it, like I know it'll probably be good for me somehow i'm also going from austin texas having lived here my whole life to going to baltimore it's like a pretty stark difference and i don't know anybody at the school like so it was it was kind of just um like one of those big first like life-changing things where i was like all right cool i'm just gonna put myself completely out there um which i have like a trend of doing this now i've like <laughs> as i look back it's like okay i keep doing the same thing and it's pro- it's kind of always rewarding um it actually is always rewarding but yeah that's how i ended up there wait where did you go abroad oh i went to australia and no, uh lived in australia <laughs> there's nowhere like you didn't want to go to france or something that didn't take like 6 days to get to so no, I. I'm actually I don't interviewing even know, an Australian no. band tonight because oh, really? they're 16 hours ahead. Oh wow! And so yeah. it'll be eight here and like noon there. Oh yeah. Or something. Sorry, go ahead. That time change is wild. <laughs> yeah, it's wild. Yeah, it's, it's really wild. So that's where I learned how to play guitar. Was in Australia. Okay. So I did. I had never played guitar. Um, like I said, I played cello as a kid, like not as a kid, but in like middle school, they make well, you play an instrument. So what did you think you were gonna um, be? Like before you picked up a guitar and, and wanted to be you, yeah, that I know now. I had done some like internships and stuff. I mean, I just thought I was going to be like just a working professional or something like that. <laughs> just like a um, guy with a yeah a professional guy, maybe get a business degree, yeah, and do business, yeah. And that's what I was doing. <laughs> I, I got it, my degrees in economics, um, and uh, yeah, I was very into like those sorts of things and. Like in, what sorts of things? Like what? I was into like history. I mean, I still I still like history, and I okay. like I like econ, and I like the idea of those things. And um, yeah, it's very random. But like, I also i I have always been like super super obsessed with music. Okay. Um, and like as a kid, I kind of thought I would be a backup singer. Like as like I, re- re- I remember this like all through my childhood, I would sing such in the car. Odd, that's such an odd specific. Thing I just to thought I n- sort of knew myself well enough to be like I think I'd be good at this because like I had like the same sort of soft voice and I was like I could right, sing right. harmony and like I think someone would probably hire me and like I think I would probably be good at that. Um, and yeah, so that was like something that I thought would be cool. Um, and then I didn't really, and I wanted to be an architect. Um, and then went ahead and started, you know, focusing a lot on sports. And I mean, I was pretty good at that. And I was like, but there's no money to be made and like lacrosse, you know, those things. Yeah, I never yeah, I made a dollar. Like, I don't understand that. Yeah, I don't know. Is um, there professional lacrosse? There, there, there is, is, but it's not anything that I really like. You know, I just right, wasn't. Right, right. It just yeah. wasn't really. And I also the reason why I started playing guitar was because I started to get hurt a lot in college. Like I tore like my groin in college. I tore my ACL twice. I tore my PCL, which is like a weird ligament in my other knee. Um, so like all these things were kind of like adding up. So it was kind of like, all right, like, you know, this lacrosse thing is quickly fading, you know, as I'm like, I'm 20 years old, I'm living in Australia. I'm like, I love music. I kind of am realizing I don't really give a shit about school or like as much as I thought I would care about it. And that happened in Australia. Like you got to Australia. And yeah. Like, well, it was great because I didn't yeah. have to do anything. We had no commitments. We just showed up and uh, it was me and my two best friends and we went to University of Wollongong in Wollongong, Australia. I'm sure your Aussie band will know what it is. Um, it's like an Aboriginal word, okay. Wollongong, but it's in like this beautiful part of like new south wales it's very cool and um yeah so the inception or the beginning of that was uh the guitar thing was that the dorm they were living in had like an area where you could like rent out like board games ping pong paddles like weird stupid stuff like that you would see at a dorm you know right and i had seen like a guitar back there and so i just went up to the counter i was like hey like 
can I check out that guitar? And they're like, yeah, no one's like ever really asked for it. You can just take it. And whenever you want to bring it back, bring it back. Well, I took it and I just didn't bring it back until like the very end of the semester. And, and then once I actually gave it back, like a kid that had seen me like playing a lot, you know, I just kind of handed it to him and I was like, all right, yeah, go and learn if you yeah. want to. But yeah, I just started learning um, there. So it's pretty interesting. It was very random. My friends were very confused that I was there with. They were like, what were you into? <clears throat> like listening to music? Oh, what were you, man. Like hey. at that point. It's cool because, like, on Spotify, you can s- sort of see, like, what your most so- listened to songs sure. were, like, by year. And um, Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so it's nice, like, looking back and stuff. Um, and, uh, yeah, I was into, like, I mean, I've, I just knew, like, every word to every Beatles song. I was, like, that sort of, like, right. Beatles fan. Sure. And I knew all the, the ways that those songs went. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just started learning those right away. But then I, I think the first few songs I learned were like old country songs, which I'm not sure. very country. That's kind of like part of my bit when I do gigs is I talk about how I wish I was more country right. than I really am. But I think one of the first songs that it was like Hank Williams and, um, you know, into like Willie Nelson, Waylon Jennings. Like I really started to get into like old country that summer that I went off to Australia um, but I knew all these classic rock songs because of the radio yeah. being in Austin and like if the I was LBGA on my best behavior, yeah. yeah, exactly. But if I was on, my, if I was on my good behavior, like, or whatever, as a kid, my dad would let me listen to 103.5 Bob FM, oh, yeah. you know, it's like all the hits from all the different eras. And then, um, but there's a lot of classic rock stuff. <laughs> and then, um, I'm laughing at the, at the puppy eating the, Eating the horn or or hoof. Okay, there you go. Eat the hoof there. <laughs> don't eat it against the table. Okay, sorry. But yeah, I knew all these songs like in my head, I guess you know well enough to. And I'd always had like pretty good rhythm and stuff, so like mm-hmm. these things were working for me, like in the guitar learning process. Yeah. Um, and you know, yeah, I was just beating on this old classical guitar, and then you know, all these years later, however long it's been um so i'm 27 now i learned when i was 20 so yeah seven years later i'm playing a ton of shows playing a ton of shows by myself mostly um you know these singer songwriter gigs that we do um and yeah it's turned into something like that's been totally life-changing to me versus like that that moment was like i, I was like oh this could be cool like and I really like felt passionate about learning and I just didn't know what it was going to turn into. I had no intention of going and playing gigs when I first started learning. I just didn't even, didn't even cross my when mind. Did, when did that, you came back to Bethesda or not Bethesda, back to Baltimore. Yeah, Baltimore. And and I mean, like I, I don't even think of Baltimore. Like I yeah. think of, an, of, of a, of a, of a, a small fucking suburb of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's invisible. <laughs> That's actually funny. <laughs> No, it's a it's an interesting place. It's I, I never meet any. I see people that have like Baltimore sports um, hats and stuff on, and like, but I've never. I don't think I've ever met anybody from like really from Baltimore and Austin. It's very, but there's a lot of Texans that are there randomly. Um, I'd always run into Texans in in Maryland, but um, but yeah, when I came back to Baltimore, just like kept playing, kept learning. At this point, like two years into playing guitar like people remember you know you start to feel some things at that point you're sort of figuring it out yeah and yeah um but yeah my friends were all like this is cool like he didn't know how to play it and then you know so my other friends at the time like they kind of were like oh teach me how to learn teach me yeah. and then you know how that goes it's like oh it's hard like never mind i don't really want yeah. <laughs> i don't really want to do that um but <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty it's pretty simple once, once people realize that it's not that easy they're like all right i'm that's it for me um but yeah that, that's basically what happened at school and then once i came home um for good and finished the whole school and i finished school that was like a big i wanted to finish like get all that done like just you know my parents like were really nice to have me go and like they just helped me out a whole lot so i just had to finish school. I wanted to do as good as I can. I had a lot of friends that were at this school in Maryland and people that I like really cared about and still I care about. And so, 
you know, finished all that, came home and basically started working on like recording and working on um yourself, like working on recording your, myself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And and then starting to do every open mic. So like in twenty eighteen I just did every like literally I had like my calendar and like every single one was just on there and every week I would just go and go and go. Um did them at um Pooties at um uh, what's it called? Um, they do like punk rock. I'm sure you've been there. It's like a coffee shop. Descent Records did their South by Southwest thing there. Kick butt coffee. Kick butt yeah, coffees. Yeah, yeah. Open I've mic. Been there. You know what? I've never. I don't know. I've been there for a show. Yeah. Yeah. I've been there for comedy shows. Okay. Before. Yeah. Yeah, but go ahead. It would sorry. be good for comedy. Yeah, it's a good. Place. It's a cool. It's a pretty cool spot. So, yeah. um, there, Cactus Cafes, open mic. That one's tricky because like so many people, I don't know how it is now, but people, a lot of people used to show up to that one. And dude, that one's been going on since like the eighties. There's so many. Monday and night, they right? have to pick out like only twenty five people. Right, right, yeah, right. Monday nights, yeah, 25 Monday nights. Yeah, twenty five people. Yeah. Um. So yeah, one time. Um. So this, so I'm doing all these open mics, and so then the beginning of like me really gigging is it starts at Cactus Cafe. Cause I didn't get picked one night and I was there with my uncle and he plays guitar and music as well, but he didn't get picked either. So then we went and we just kind of like jammed, um, like in one of like the corridors of Texas, of yeah, university yeah. of Texas. Yeah, yeah. And then he took me to hole in the wall and, uh, Ben Bollinger. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. Um, he was he's just playing. on the show. Oh really? Ago, oh, yeah. I saw that. Yeah, on, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, he was playing at Hole in the Wall. Yeah. And it was like really quiet. Everyone was sitting down. And he's, I mean, I am a fan of his. Yeah. I really like him he's a lot. Great. He doesn't really know who I am, but I was there watching him. And then, like, you know, I think he was like smoking a cigarette outside after. And I was just like, hey, like, that was really, really good. Yeah. You know, just yeah. nice job. Like, great job, really. And he, it was a good show for him. Like, everyone was sitting down. It was like, everyone was very much paying attention to him. Monday night, it's like raining outside. It's like October or something like that. Um, kind of like how it is now. And it was just very chill. And I was like, to my uncle, I was like, I would really want it. This is the type of thing that I would like to do. Like, this is the set. Like, right there on that front stage at Hole in the Wall, that would be the best possible thing that could yeah. happen. So I just went back the next day and I brought my guitar with me, went back in the Hole in the Wall. Like, I had no, I didn't have a gig or anything. I just brought my guitar with me and just showed up just cause I was like, fuck it. Like I'll just show up and you know, what's the worst that can happen. Yeah. Um, and so sit down, start talking to the bartender and then Ben comes in and like sits down like next to me. I'm like, Hey man, like I was here for your show last night. Like right, it right. Was, I'm that guy. And he's like, Oh cool. So then we start talking about like Bob Dylan and like just, you know, musician like stuff, you know, sure. things that musicians might talk about while drinking a beer. Yeah. And then we're talking to the bartender and she's like, oh shit, like my show for tomorrow canceled. Um, ben, can you do it? And I, he was like, oh no, I can't. And I was like, well, I could do it. And she's like, oh, really? Like, you know, what's your the name? Like, you? you have music? <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, yeah. yeah, here's like my music. Oh, and yeah. she just put my phone up to her ear and she's like, cool. It sounds good. Yeah. Uh, 630 or 830 tomorrow, like hole in the wall, you know, front stage. And I'm like, and you Great. Had a, then you got a gig. I got a gig with a so, time slot, not a, with a time slot. Draw your name out of a hat. <laughs> yeah. Like it's, it was an official thing. Yeah. So then that sort of kicked off from that point on. I played at the hole in the wall. Um, they're a happy hour set. I had a, my own little spot like every single week, sometimes every other week, depending on like other scheduling, but yeah. consistently at least every other week for literally until COVID until March of 2020. So were you there like, like, uh, Ethan was doing his thing there. Ethan um, Zirian and, and Jeff Johnston with the saw. No, I never saw that. Oh, they weren't doing their thing. Well, I, so I would always play on Saturday. And oh, like, okay. it would always like be like Wednesday. Saturday at like six. Like, this is not like the, it wasn't prime time hole in the wall. Cause it also is like the dragon. Like there's a lot of like Texas football games going on on Saturdays and there's, but it's just like a lot of different things that I would see. Were you able to get something going there though? Oh yeah. It was like they, you, people would come back on, yeah. like that was the oh, thing. Oh my God. It was the, it was, that was like the first thing that was like 
uh, like it gave me a ton of momentum because I could always <laughs> tell people like, yeah. hey, like you can come Six, see eight. me. Yeah. You can come see me. And sometimes they'd put me later or early. It was like in the range of like 5 p.m. to like 8 p.m. I would be playing for an hour. Um, and yeah, I kind of like just came into my own, cut my teeth doing that. And I mean, I got so much better. Like doing, yeah, yeah. like if someone had seen me, I mean, they saw me there at Hole in the Wall. Um, Lynn um, Cowles, she was the one that, um, I don't know if you know her, but she's she's amazing. And um, I haven't seen her in forever. I haven't even, I haven't played at the Hole in the Wall since March 2020. You know, things have like really evolved since then for me. And I also am not like, the most whole I'm just not I'm a singer songwriter yeah, 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 but yeah, like yeah, I, yeah, I am yeah. like really so I, and I'm I my music for anybody like that has never heard my music I mean I, I try to be like really upbeat and like really um, I try to be more poppy than I really am because I want to keep it upbeat and like keep it fun at my shows and stuff but I really at my core I'm just like a chill singer songwriter um, are you, but wait, when you say songs. chill singer songwriter, are you saying like a bummer guy or just chill? no, just chill? Okay, I'm, okay. And I'm really yeah. not a bummer, and that's what I mean by like the pop thing too. Like my songs and stuff. Um, uh, you did, like, you, oh fuck, what is the name of that song? I didn't write it down. Oh, you dip shit. Waited There's, to say is that the no, one I sent? Or no, no, no. Uh, I'm talking about the record. Oh, tonight like, and myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. there's a song on there where the girls kind of moved on, and you've moved on, and that mm. made me feel terrible. She's seeing somebody <laughs> or something. Fucking, oh, in time. I was mad. That's at you. That one's in probably, time. Yeah, in I was time. very mad at you about that. Yeah, that's Going the second a thing song. Like that, and I'm like, oh, so she is seeing someone now. <laughs> Rule Thomas. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the second song that I ever wrote. I wrote that when I was um, in Baltimore, and it hurts um, my feelings. Yeah, you were able to hurt a dude in his fifties. <laughs> feelings with that song yeah that's a good that's a good breakup song it'll make yeah. you feel something um i was mad at you <laughs> but my songs i i really i'm not um the like a mopey songwriter no. at all it's no. like it's um it's just like personal writing yeah. and like um but yeah so it's not exactly like and i also would just be solo acoustic like and i still really am like that right um which uh, you know at hole in the wall a lot of times like there'll be like a <laughs> big really like loud that. band or there'll be like yeah 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 um yeah. you know something that's just a little bit more heavy and i'm kind of just not exactly like that but like literally like i just wouldn't be any musician any anywhere close to musician i am today without the hole in the wall and like how that whole experience that's great went. to hear and then I had a band like later on in that experience of those shows going on and that like two year, more than two year span. Then like my band started playing in that time slot and that started helping a lot and I started to get booked in other Oh wait, places. so then you had a band? I did. I had a oh, little band. On. Can I tell you something? Yeah. You know who else would probably say the same thing about the hole in the wall? Mm. Britt Daniel from Spoon. Mm. You know Spoon? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's amazing. He, I, he I knew would say that, that very same there. fucking thing. Wow. Yeah. I, I, I venture to bet. I would say that same thing. Maybe not as deeply as it was for you, but I had some, I've, I've had some, uh, you know, those rooms that aren't supposed to sound good. That room yeah. is not supposed to sound good. No, it's just not. Yeah. And you're not supposed to have transcendent. The walls are falling apart. Yeah. And like, the PA is yeah. like, I think you just plug into a thing and you get like, I oh, don't yeah. know. Oh yeah. You're, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> sometimes like, the monitors are, yeah, I mean, it's yeah, like, yeah. it's all over the place, man. Same with, same with the Continental Gallery. Yeah. That's not supposed to sound good. Same kind of PA. It's just a couple <laughs> speakers and a thing like from 1978. Like you yeah. plug in there. Oh, I don't know if it's going to work. And then it does, but you have like these, both of those rooms have magic in them. Oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. And like the windows right there. So someone can see that like something's going yeah. on in there. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that, that was like, yeah, it was just good. So what was your band? So I had a band and it was, um, it was called lost souvenirs. And so this is my project with, um, it was me and my uncle who's, who was my bassist in that band. Okay. And I wanted it to be like rule Thomas or whatever. Um, that like, that's all falling apart at this point like that completely yeah so covid kind of killed that band basically because like that must have been nice for those people that wanted to break up their band but then covid came and they didn't really even have to do the dirty work <laughs> yeah just like, well, just guys, like, you know just we just, let's go do some other stuff now yeah go ahead yeah, yeah and it was just the solo thing i mean still to this day I'm, i and it's funny because i you know played sports and i'm like 
I was a team like player. A, I was a captain of my yeah, team. Yeah, yeah, and I'm like, yeah. I was good at like rallying the yeah. troops and like getting there, like those sorts of things. And now in this phase, I'm, I still am really collaborative with some of my friends and, and recording and, um, you know, having work with Frenchie and Kenneth and, yeah. and I want to get um, into that. Yeah. And, uh, and I've got, um, me and, uh, Lee wall. Um, he's, uh, from the band Luna, um, nineties, um, rock band oh, um, yeah. from New York city. Oh yeah. Um, How do so, you know that guy? So, uh, Frenchie and Frenchie, us, okay. and he's like my main collaborator now. Okay. That's um, great. Yeah. It was, it's amazing. I mean, he's like a really fucking cool. And yeah. Like yeah. super, like he just has done really good things in music. I mean, he's, he's a real, real professional musician which is like really cool. And he's kind of like my, he's just a, my friend, but like, he really is kind of like my mentor a little bit. I get to yeah, like ask him yeah, questions, yeah, yeah. but he's, he's my friend. Really. That's important to have, man. Isn't it? It is. Mentorship. Those, those guys that, that guide you through. Oh yeah. This thing. Yeah. Just telling you that like, Hey, you're not doing like the wrong thing. That's kind of what I, that's important to too. Yeah. yeah. And also when, when you're, you know, like, hey, I wouldn't do that. Yeah, <laughs> you know? exactly. Should like having s- <laughs> like a, it's like a little bit like a guardian angel like, yeah, and yeah. and you don't have to like it's just nice it's like a really yeah. underrated nice thing to have so, a good friend like that let me ask you this uh, yeah. going up to like okay go going up to march of 2020 what did you do did yeah. you do the 14th did you do saturday the 14th did you play that day oh yeah okay so that's the last day that you played. oh yeah we okay. played that day and then that, that wednesday everything hit the fan yeah my last whatever. gig was that the 13th of friday mm. but there's hardly anyone there because of yeah. the thing. yeah yeah same yeah and yeah, everyone's like, like do we shake my hands friends on? like <laughs> only my friends had come to right. that gig because they were like okay we understand like what's going on but no besides that it was sure Oh, it was a very wild, wacky thing. And then, would you do live streams and shit after that, or so, what did you do for that? We did. I did a, like a lot of YouTube, like a lot of like Instagram videos where I'm just like propping yep. my phone, like playing mm-hmm. a song um, in my house, like unplugging the fridge, <laughs> like I was saying, <laughs> and and just like kind of doing things like that for however long that went on, and then. Um, I got. I remember I got booked at uh, Geraldine's. Um, Hannah Hager. She was um, yeah, now her. she's um, kind of. She's not the booker at Geraldine's anymore, but um, it, she's still involved with the hotel. It's sweet and Emily. Stuff. It's Emily. Yeah, yeah Emily, Emily Miller. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's, she's really, really cool. Yeah, she's a good person. She's really cool, and um, yeah. Uh, so. Hannah was like, it was like June of 2020. It was like when things were getting better, like, or it was like in May when things were getting better and they wanted to do like a show like at Geraldine's. Oh, really? And I literally was on, and she wanted to play with me, Hannah Hager, who's like, she's a really, really great, phenomenal, amazing, phenomenal, amazing voice. Yes. And, and great songwriting and just really cool. I was literally on my way to her like a house or apartment. We were going to like rehearse to do like a little solo or duo acoustic. Thing. Right. Right. And I had never played with her. And I literally started to feel like shit uh, in my car. Had I had, I had it. Uh, and I fucking, thank God I turned my car around, yeah. went and took my temperature and yeah. called her. And I'm like, Hey, like, this is not like, you know how people cancel on your like, like, yeah, whatever. Like, no, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah. no, like this is insane. But like, I, th- I just started to feel so sick on the way to your house. Like, and she was like, no way. Turns out I had it and whatever, you know, like a lot of people, I, but that was like early on. I think I was like the first person. I didn't know anybody that had had it. Right. Yeah. Besides yeah. myself. Right. That was like the first right. thing. But yeah, it it's funny. I knew a bunch of people that were uh, like had gone to Europe in mm. February or end of February, beginning of March. And almost everyone I knew that came back from there was like, I don't know if I had it, but I had something weird. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Yeah. 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 Nobody has, has any idea. It's still like, yeah, yeah it's weird. But, um, so when did you start recording this record with Frenchie? How did you meet Frenchie? What happened? Kenneth? So I met Frenchie through that, first band that i mentioned that okay. lost souvenirs band oh wait did he do a record with you and guys yeah we did we cut two singles and like when did day. you do that with anar with was anar there anar was 
present, but okay, he didn't that's how play I know anything. This. I yeah. know this band. That's yeah. how it, it was like end of 2019, beginning of 2020. It was actually, oh my God, I, like literally my time, my timetable is so it's thrown fucked up. off. Like it's so fucked up. Well, I yeah. work with the Austin Music Foundation mm-hmm. and we yeah. do the artist development program yeah, right yeah, there. Yeah. And I feel and like I it was around. A-N-R, yeah, a yeah. was like, hey, this might be a good opportunity. And oh. then that band like just didn't really work right, out right, and right. stuff. Okay. Um, not saying that he was like going to have us or anything like, but it was like a little bit of a conversation, like a short sure. conversation. And Kenneth was... Um, Frenchie's assistant uh-huh. at the time. Yeah. And that's why I met Kenneth. Okay. And it was funny because like, I don't know, I probably talked to Kenneth more during those sessions than I did like my own band and stuff because I, I never met Kenneth. He's obviously like a really cool guy yeah. and like not many guys you meet in like leather pants and no, like, a, like a, immediately a you just yellow, visually yeah. can tell this guy is like <laughs> really cool and yeah. different and stuff. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, he, him and I kind of like hit it off and then um and then yeah fast forward like six nine months ish uh yeah Frenchie and i started doing the solo record the uh the one that just recently came out so that that record had been sitting around for like a while and kind of like we we recorded like five songs at first Frenchie and i did and that was going to be an ep and then later on we recorded the rest of it um and that's that whole album was fully funded by me going and playing solo shows and stuff. So that's like cool. it was basically yeah, like yeah. me gigging like turned into me being able to go and record. Yeah. It was like very, you know, that's just how it goes. I mean, I'm sure that there's a ton of people that can relate with that. I call that the real Kickstarter. For sure. <laughs> like you're going and like yeah, and go out and that's play where some where fucking tips four are hour shows there. Yeah, exactly. some winery in the middle of nowhere. Totally. The cold. Totally. No one cares. Totally, and you're singing um, me and Julio down by the schoolyard. I went through your covers oh yeah, list. singing all the. I mean, I still I love I I sing the covers that that like have influenced me, and yeah, that's that's. I mean, I love Paul. Simon the private shows you stuff. get a lot of private stuff. Like, are you on some? Who does that for you? Are you on I some different every, sites? I, or yeah, anything? I'm on a few different. I like do a lot of private or something gigs, like that. But I also am just a little bit of a talker, so I sort of I just talk to people, and like they see me at shows, and then yeah. I give them my card yeah. and. So it's a lot of things like that, like this past weekend, a couple private things and, um, cool. Yeah. Just, and, and very, I mean, that shit pays too, man. Those private gigs are, are where it's at. Yes, um, for <laughs> sure. And also it's just good cause normally they'll turn into another one and they'll turn into yep, another one. Exactly. Again. Right. Cause then they see if you, you and if they're like, if you do it right. Totally. I mean that. I would say the thing that I'm best at is showing up and like executing, you know, everything Dude. leading up to that. It's kind of like scary. I'm getting better at yeah, it yeah, all the time, yeah, but yeah. No, I've always been good at like, if I get there yeah. and like, um, you know, I just, I can just put on the show and I'm, I'm pretty good at reading people. I think I've always been pretty good at that. So, um, I mean, it's just me when I'm doing these things. Yeah. So I don't, if it was me in a band, it would be, more troublesome for me to like have to be mixing everybody and like right, putting on right. the show but yeah it's just me and i know what my guitar is supposed to sound like and what my voice should sound like and yeah yeah i mean that's i mean how a lot of singers on guys probably feel too can probably relate to that just well, having i mean to, I, i'm in a cover band that does a lot of private stuff like that heck yeah. I, I i personally i wouldn't want to be alone like a lot, some of those gigs yeah. are are so weird that it's you're just glad you're with your oh, friends. Yeah. Some of them it. are crazy, man. Yeah, I've so been. I did a private gig um, two weeks. No, yeah, two weekends ago, and this nice couple. They had I never even had met them. They had Venmo tipped me, put their phone number in the tip, mm-hmm. and just said, "Hey, we're interested in hiring you." So I just texted this person and started talking and mm-hmm. they booked me and you know i did my making sure that they're like official enough to like show up at a place and that sort of thing like yeah, yeah. standard process they're, they're not gonna invite you like you're gonna get there they're gonna be naked <laughs> yeah like, <laughs> like making sure that like okay bring you into our like, i will be paid like at least yeah. like to be here and like you know um this is like a, a birthday party or something but i show up and like it's just the nicest sweetest family ever and um like the grandma, it was her seventy like second birthday or something. Yeah, grandma had dementia. We're in this backyard, Aww. and you know dementia's hard. Like yeah. it's just yeah, tough. Yeah. But yeah. like, I could connect with her enough to be like, 
you know, do you know Elvis? Do you know this? Yeah. Do you know that? And I just started, do you know Johnny Cash? You know, yeah. playing her these songs. Yeah. And like five minutes later, like she's dancing and oh. like she's coming up to me and she's like, I'm going to hire you. I'm going to hire you. I'm like, you're good. Like, <laughs> let me just keep playing new music. And, <laughs> but yeah, that's like, you know, that's like a standard private gig for me almost. It's just like a night, some nice people and I'm just playing the music. And yeah. that's what I really, <clears throat> I love playing music, but. Um, I just really like connecting with people and like making somebody's like maybe hour, like not making their whole day or anything, but just making their hour a little bit better. So just taking them out of the, time. out of the grind of fucking life. Like yeah. that's part of the, a uh, part of our job is just like, totally. It's just a little distraction. Yeah. Just like how TV's a distraction. I have my TV on way too much and it's just like a little, but it's a way better version of, of that. And yeah, it's, man. it's like, good clean fun <laughs> yeah um and it's distracting for me too to go and, and play for people and but yeah a lot of private gigs and um a lot of like you know just where would you find a uh, like a singer songwriter like and you probably go there enough you times do the airport all show and shit up. like that i've never done the airport i've been offered to do it but it's always been like a weird time and um i just haven't done it i've i've done do a lot of restaurants, um, and I sing my, my original stuff at these places too, uh -huh. just so people know. So if you ever see me like promoting uh, a little you. show, I'll, I'll do I'll do a lot of my original content, and people won't really be able to realize. That's what I was gonna say. Is they that won't your, know your stuff is accessible enough. Totally that yeah. that you don't know if you've if uh, like oh maybe he is doing a song by another guy because yeah. you're, you're a fucking great songwriter. You're a great you. singer too. I don't know. Thank you. I'm gonna ask Frenchie because we're very good friends. Mm -hmm. Uh, cause it, it seems like you're not a, like a lot of takes guy. You don't seem like you have to be auto tuned or anything. You have just Those, like a really natural, pleasant, lovely voice to listen to. I appreciate it. That was the biggest thing of COVID was me getting better at singing. And I, I just sang a lot like in my house. I just sang a ton and I just got better recording myself and, hearing myself and stuff. And yeah, I don't think I was a very good singer for a while. And then somehow I like sort of just started to get better. And I'm the sing the singing on the album is like the next stuff that you'll hear that's coming out for me. When is that coming out? So probably this in just the came next, out, right? it did, but I'm probably going to release like September. five more songs in the next three to six months. Do you do them with Frenchie as well? Th these are with um, with Lee from Luna. Oh, cool. Lee Wall. Awesome. So, um, yeah, it's kind of turned into something where I, I didn't really hear He does, yeah. Okay, cool. He does. And that wasn't really the, like, the intention. So he, he played, we have a little trio band now that's uh -huh. just Rule Thomas and I show up and it's just, it's me, Lee Wall, and then Colton Forrest Hardy, who's my bassist. Really, he should probably be like my lead guitarist or something. He's he's super super good at lead guitar, and I sold him a bass on Facebook Marketplace. This is how I met this friend of mine, <laughs> and like, and he didn't murder you. <laughs> he didn't. We met at the Trader Joe's parking lot, and like, just like I'm talking to you now. By the way, like I've never met you until no, today. Until today. Like this is how I just like to talk to people. I'm just you know yeah. talking and just you know just I enjoy this. But yeah, that's how I was talking to this guy in the Trader Joe's parking lot. And he was like, I think I said, it. I was like, it'd be cool if we played in a band together. Like this bass would look cool with the, you know, this guitar. <laughs> and we traded these, these guitars for yeah. each other and stuff. And yeah, so that turned into something cool. But, um, but yeah, probably five more songs in the next, um, it just, it's kind of up to, uh, Jeff Grounds. Jeff at, Grounds. Also, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Then, how did you end up hooking up with him and getting this on Descent Records? Frenchy. I mean, Frenchy is my like. He's just the, the man. I don't yeah, he's the man. Why he likes me so much, but he helps. He's been helping me out a lot. He's a good person, man. I like him a lot. Man. He is. I think he thinks that I'm like a little different, and yeah, like that. Are. That's why, um, you know, he introduced me to Lee, and he didn't even he didn't really even introduce me to Lee. He had sent one of my songs to Lee and was like, hey, just check this out. And I, I think he does this with a lot of people. Sure. And Lee liked it enough to be like, if you guys record more songs, I want to come and play drums. Awesome. So Lee's playing drums on a few of the songs on the album, cool. um, which is super cool. 
just so people know, like he Lee Wall, he's just Luna. Just look up Luna. Yeah, and they're they're a really great band and nineties um, nineties band. band. Yeah, and um, like right when I met him, they played three ten two nights in a row, uh-huh. and there was like sold out. And then I was like, this guy's amazing. Like this band is great. I was on like a huge kick of theirs. Yeah, and yeah. They're just very like nineties amazing. Yeah, yeah. Super, super yeah. good. Great, great group. One of Frenchie's 90s bros. Yeah, and then they were on <laughs> tour together back in the day. Yeah. So, like, Six Lee deluxe. saw the wild Frenchie of the 90s. I know. I've, <laughs> yeah. I've known Frenchie for 31 years. That's incredible. I know. I can't, I we can't worked at Whole Foods that. together. No. That's that's where we met. Yeah. That is incredible. We are just buddies. Wow, I would have loved to be at Whole Foods with you guys. That would probably be pretty fun. I had really long hair. Um, <laughs> he... Uh, yeah, I, I got, but this time of year, I spend a lot of time over there and working on these uh, Austin Music Foundation things. I was That's just awesome. in there last week doing a thing with this guy, uh, uh, Poet Hawkins. He's really good. I pl- so I met him for the first time yesterday. Oh, yeah? So he so I played Mozart's yesterday. Oh, yeah, I and mean, he plays there all the time. Yeah, he played yeah. before me, and then it was like it's great, so... Right? So I literally didn't even hear him play. I just oh. showed up and he was already starting to break his oh. stuff down and I was help we were all helping him. Yeah. Um Robert and Jennifer oh shoot, what's their last name? They're in like a duo too. I don't know. Um, but they uh, Sorry. we were all just kind of conversing and I, I never met I never met him. He's a great guy, man. Yeah, he was awesome he's really cool. awesome. But it was so cold I kinda of felt bad for him and it was like really, really cold outside at Mozart's yeah. yesterday. But it, it was all good, and yeah, it was cool to meet him. But yeah, um, with Jeff Grounds, um, yeah, got introduced to Jeff by Frenchie, and um, yeah, I guess it's kind of like Lee. Jeff liked my um, that song, Waited to Say. Uh-huh. Um, Great song. And um, thank you. And the whole idea, it's like I listened to it again today. Is, um, it's just so, it's really sparse and stuff, and that was like the goal of that of that song was it to, for it to be like very open, um, which Frenchy, I mean, he's, he's good at his job. Yeah. He sure. really, I really loved, uh, you know, when I saw it was him that did it, then I went back and listened to it again and I was like, all right, wow. Mm-hmm. So it's interesting. And I'm sure that he was, he was pleased to get somebody like you. That's of the quality that you are. That's different than most stuff that he does, you know? Yeah. And I think I challenged him a little bit to be sure. like, let's just like, keep it real simple. Yeah. Like, and he and he we definitely I mean he produced the song but we definitely like co-produced it in the way that he everything was on the table yeah and if anything we just took stuff out at the end sure. like in the final mix sure. and and a lot of that was just me like no we don't need that we don't need that right take out the guitar there just put the bass on the second verse you know keep it keep it real real simple did i hear the white mellotron on come my way oh yeah that thing is all over <laughs> that's what i always end up playing on on those things that so and i think like he had just gotten that like when we had first started recording yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. and kenneth um any so on this album any keyboard you hear or like any sound that is not a guitar or a drum or a bass um is is kenneth playing that and he spent a ton of time like did a beautiful job out. oh i mean he's just the man yeah yeah and i wish i could have paid him more for what he did i mean he's just a great he's oh, you know, and i'm a, a huge of... cuckoos fan like they're like me he's, too me too he is like my favorite austin band oh, yeah. yeah and i like can't really tell him that because he's like you know thanks like i don't know what yeah. else to do with that information but i'm a huge shooks guy too i think they're like one of the coolest bands in town for sure oh i know i, I tell band. marlon i'm like i mean yeah Shooks are awesome. Um, yes, I'm. I'm. Uh, and Marlon was there when we um, did the uh, album, and then that's how Kenneth started playing those shows at Continental. Uh, okay, because <laughs> Marlon came over to the studio and he was like, "Frenchie, do you, does your band want to play?" And Frenchie's like, uh, "I don't think that's gonna work out." And Kenneth was there, and Kenneth's like, "I could play." And then that sort of was a cool little thing that yeah. was going on, but. <clears throat> Dude, Kenneth played late. Oh, really late? Yeah, he's playing. 
it was like <laughs> that fucking uh, late slot. And he, I mean, and he is doing his solo thing now. He's got the band, and I've just been, yeah, that's uh, good. Booked every single time that they've been playing, but so he's back um, with the band. It's not just him with the thing. I did is, a show with him last year. It is going to be a band. Yeah. Okay. And good. They're they're like in full force, and not um, that it's not cool with just him, but it's just yeah. there's, he's doing a bunch of stuff, and I want him to focus on me oh, and the yeah. audience. I mean, <laughs> totally. I he's great. Yeah. And I think that's why him and I connected right away was like, we're both, we were both doing that solo thing and I yeah. was doing my little kick drum. Right, right. Thing. That's really cool that you do that. Thanks. Yeah. It was just sort of something that I was like, I mean, I like shaky graves a lot. Yeah. Like I'm a, and I went and saw him and was like really, really close one time yeah. at Cactus Cafe. And I, he talked about hole in the wall and him and I talked afterwards and I was like, that's, that was my situation sort of as well. Yeah. Blah, blah. And I was like. I'll just make one, you know, I'll just make a drum and then if I ever play it and, and that turned into me playing it all the time. I have one like that that's Heck a suitcase. Yeah. Can you see that? Back oh there? yeah. Yeah. That's kind of what mine, mine's a little old Samsonite suitcase, but I, I put a guitar center use snare drum inside of it. Oh, and, cool. And like totally configured it and everything. Like it's pretty similar to how hit shaky great Alejandro's uh -huh. drum is. Um, and, um, I think that's why Kenneth and I connected because he was doing the solo thing and like that just takes, especially if you have some band experience right, at all, right, right. like it's just a different, Yeah, it's very lonely and like, very lonely. and I like still play off that with the crowd a little yeah. bit like, all right, I'm lonely up here. Like you guys want to clap along or do yeah, something yeah, like, yeah. and, and that yeah. can be sort of fun, but um, yeah, Kenneth, uh, he, He's just a really good dude, yeah. I, I great love dude. Kenneth. Love him, too. Um, Rule, man, it's been great talking to you, man. People can find you at rulemusic.com. Uh, you got shows. You'll be playing places. Are you doing any band shows uh, so, in the next month or so? Um, this will be out in a few My weeks. next band show is at Geraldine's. Um, let me see my calendar. It's late December. Oh, great. It is uh, December 28th great. at Geraldine's. From eight to nine thirty PM. All right. And that should be pretty fun. And it's a trio. That's what that's the band format. Um Lee Wall on drums, Colton Forrest Hardy on bass. What time and, did you say uh, eight to ten? Eight to nine thirty. Yep. And it'll be um pretty much the whole record and then some of the new stuff what we're working on. Um, which will be, I'm excited for you to hear it. It'll be, um, pretty different cause it's, it's just, it's not Frenchy. So it, in that way it just yeah. sounds completely different, but Lee's got a really cool studio in his house and, um, he does a lot of music for commercials and, um, movies and TV shows and stuff. Cool. And so he's, that's kind of like his realm, but he also used to do like mixes for, um, Luna for that, for the band. And there's right. like remixes that are like Lee wall mixes that are on Spotify and all that stuff. And, I check those out. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. But yeah, new music, lots of shows. I'm at Irene's every Sunday night. That's the show that I'll plug um, here. That's like a consistent okay. um, solo show. What time is that? That is from 6.30 to 8.30. And Where I is just, Irene's? That is on, um, it's right off of West 6th Street. I can't remember like what the um, North South Street is. Let's see. What, where did you say it was? Uh, West 6th Street. Okay. All right. Yeah, it's kind of like a, I don't know, like, they have really good drinks. That's I started, like, trying to play there forever ago because their food was so good and they have, like, a record player and stuff. And I was like, they need to have live music. And I bugged the hell out of them for the longest time. And then finally they broke, they broke like, a year ago. So that's been, like, a very long-term residency. Cool, man. There. Um, she come out and see you play. Yeah, you should. Can it's I bring Rosie West? to Irene's now? Definitely. I can? Yeah, there's there's pups that are there. Oh, good. Rosie, we're doing a Sunday thing. West Avenue and West 6. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, that's down the street from my cousins. Maybe she'll come meet me down there. Yeah, it's a good spot. I'll get you some drinks and some food. All right. They got good food. Really good food. Rule, this has been great talking to you, man. It's good to Thanks meet so you, Thanks so much man. for reaching out. Thank you so much for yeah, having man. me. Yeah, man. Yeah. Really, thank you. Uh, everyone get out there and check out this record. It is Tonight and Myself. The debut record from Rule Thomas. New new music coming in the next few months. And uh, congratulations, man. Thank you. Yeah, man. Yep. Yeah.
That's Rule Thomas. You can find him at rulemusic.com. His newest album, Tonight and Myself, produced by my dear friend Frenchie Smith and out on Descent Records. Available now wherever it is you stream and download music. You can see him at on December 28th at Geraldine's. He'll be playing from 8 to 9.30. You can see him Sundays at Irene's from 6.30 to 8.30. Rule Thomas, thank you for coming to the house. Love talking to you. What a great guy. What a great guy. Very nice cat. Nice chap. Hey, gang, don't forget when you're out there checking out rulemusic.com, you can subscribe to this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, anywhere you find podcasts. We put out new shows every Tuesday and every Friday. And this month, we are dropping shows on Saturday nights. They are from the vault where we reach back into our vault of over 1,200 episodes. Pull it out, shine it up, and 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 play it. We release it for you just in case you, ha- you never heard it or you want to hear it again. Lots and lots of great ones. Uh, we just had... Uh, David Garza, we had Adrian Quesada from Black Pumas, uh, and just this last weekend, Kenny Withrow from uh, from Edie Brickell and New Bohemian. So get out there and check it out. Gang, this is, uh, this is more music from Rule Thomas from his album Tonight and Myself out on Descent Records. Go to rulemusic.com for all of your Rule Thomas needs. Have a great week, whatever it is you're doing. Let's get down. Let's get down.